I don't even know how to solve this. Hello, my name is Angelo, and I'm a third year computer engineering major at San Jose State University. I usually vlog my fun experiences here at San Jose State University, but after two years, I want to give you guys a little insight of what it's like being an engineering student here. If you don't know what computer engineering is, it is... What is it? Google it. A combination of electrical engineering and computer science into one. I'll be talking about the classes I've taken and general tips to get through your first two years here at San Jose State. First thing first, my experience here as an engineering student is one of many, so this does not reflect all of the other engineering students that are in the same hellhole as I am. Okay, so your first two years will typically be GEs and lower div classes, and in so my first semester I took E10, English 1A, Math 31, and Math 42. E10 is probably going to be the easiest engineering class you'll take. It's super fun, it's got a lab, you get to do two big group projects, and the first one you get to create a wind turbine, and for the final you get to create a robot. Here are some picks. So I also took Math 31, which is Calculus 2, and I kid you not, this was one of the hardest math classes I've ever taken. The thing is that the professor will be really good, but the midterms were insanely hard. So for this class, you can check like how well you did on a midterm compared to all the other students. And when I checked, I was above average, but above average was failing. There were five midterms and I failed the first one and so that's when I decided to drop out of the class. I'm kidding, I dropped out of college. This goes into my first tip is to don't get discouraged when you fail an exam because there's still hope. And the second tip is to don't be afraid to ask for help. The professor would start knowing who I was because I would come in after every single class to talk about concepts I didn't understand. This class also came with a workshop which is basically free time. You can either go study, do homework, or scroll through Instagram which is, which is what I did. But do take advantage of this workshop because you're a freshman and you probably don't know anyone. You'll be surrounded by people who are taking the same class as you and this is the time where you can start making friends. I also took Math 42 which was discrete math and it's been a while so I'm just looking it up. Discrete mathematics is the study of mathematical structures that are fundamentally discrete rather than continuous. You learn stuff like sets, logic, mathematical induction, proofs, proofs using mathematical induction, and probability more. <laughs> This professor gave us two midterms and a final and weekly assignment, but the thing is that he randomly checks which one he wants to grade, and so you better just do them all. Hello, new fit, new day. It was getting dark, so then I couldn't record anymore, so now I'm gonna talk about my spring semester. So this semester I took Bio 10, Compi 30, Communications 20, English 1B, and Math 32. This was one of the more chill semesters I've had at SJ because it was mostly GEs. Bio 10 was pretty easy because the professor put her midterms online. And this is my third tip. Make sure to get the best professors when you're signing up for classes. It's honestly the biggest factor when I pick my classes because the professors can really make or break your experience or even your grade in a class. Great my Professor is a great website where you can check if your professor is trash or not. That sounded like it was sponsored. Compi 30 was an easy class if you've coded before. It's basically introduction to programming, for loops, if then statements, while loops, and more. It also has a lab, and the lectures are supposed to help you with the lab, but sometimes it doesn't, and you're just gonna have to learn on your own. And that's another skill that you need to know during college, is that you just sometimes can't rely on the lectures and the professors, and so you have to look things up on your own. This class also has an in-class written final, and a final of whatever you want to do. My group and I replicated a Simon game, and if you don't know what that is, just look it up. Communication 20 was easy, half online, half in class. You just have to do three speeches and a final speech. Nothing too hard, just don't forget about the online assignments. I sometimes forget them. Math 32 was Calc 3, and that was easier than Calc 2 in my opinion, so... If you pass Calc 2, you should be fine. And that rounds up the classes I took my first year of college. So in the fall of my second year, I took Asian American Studies, Music Appreciation, Compi 50, and Physics 50. And this is what my schedule looked like. Physics 50, not gonna lie, was a pretty hard class. Class has this calculus based, but you don't really use that much calc, to be honest. Some of the stuff you learn, kinematic equations, rotational motion, work, energy, and more. You don't have to memorize all the equations because my professor allowed us to use a cheat sheet on the midterms and finals. So my biggest tip for this class is to just understand the concept and learn how to use the equations. I also signed up for peer tutoring. SJSU allows you to schedule weekly appointments with tutors. So use the free resources on campus. Don't waste your tuition money. Another hard class for that semester was Compi 50 because it was such a huge jump from Compi 30 which was the prereq for that class. It was super fast paced and it only gets harder throughout the semester. And someone told me that even though the coding gets harder, you get better at coding, so you should be fine. Some of the stuff you learn are data abstraction, classes, structures, and associated algorithms. I also took music appreciation, it wasn't too hard, it was all online. You just have to go to a couple of concerts to write up a report. Asian American studies wasn't too hard either because of my professors. The midterms and finals were online. Again, try to get the best professors. Show you a magic trick ready? Ooh. Let's finally finish the video. Alright, finally my most recent semester. 
So it was my second year, spring semester. So the classes I took are Physics 51, Asian American Studies, Psychology 1, and ISC 130. So let's first talk about Physics 51. This will be a little different from Physics 50. The people in your lecture will be smaller. So for Physics 50, there was like 100 plus people in your class. But for Physics 51, there's going to be like 30, 40 people. So for my professor, he didn't post anything on Canvas, which is the website where you can check how you're doing in terms of your grades, uh, your assignments, and any announcements that your professors have. And yeah, my professor didn't do any of that. So you just didn't know what grade you had throughout the whole semester. I remember one class, they were handing out the first midterm, and I was late, so I had to come in after class to get my midterm back. I looked at my midterm, and then I got a big fat 35 out of 100. Then, another guy grabbed his midterm from the professor, he looks at it, and he goes, yes! And I'm like, damn, like, he probably got a pretty good score, right? I walk out of class and I see him, and I'm like, oh hey, like, what'd you get on the midterm, right? I was really curious. Curious? Curious? Curious. Curious. Yeah. With such excitement, he's like, oh, I got a 28, and I was like, oh. And he tells me the average was like, around 30, and I'm like, oh! That's good. I did better than average, so that was cool, I guess. The thing about the class is that the midterm was nothing like the homework. Rather, the midterm was very conceptual based. And for the homework, I used this website called Chegg, which is a website that shows most of the online assigned homework. You do have to pay for it, but if you share it with a few friends, then it's like five bucks a month. Just don't get boba for once. And just because you have this website now, doesn't mean that you can just look up all the answers. While you can, that's not really gonna help you for your midterm or finals when you can't use the website. What I did is to use it for like harder problems that I knew that wasn't going to be useful for the test. The other class I took was ISC 130, which is Engineering, Probability, and Statistics. First week you think it'll be pretty easy because you're like, oh, just find the average, but then it gets a lot harder throughout the semester. I got weekly homework that was due at Tuesday at 9 a.m. So make sure you know your due dates. I had two midterms and a final. This class is one of those where you really have to learn stuff on your own because in my opinion, the professor didn't really help me out. So I had to YouTube a lot of the concepts and ask my friends for help. Psychology was a pretty easy and interesting class. Asian American Studies 33B. This time around, you were able to learn more of like the Asian part of the Asian American Studies because the first semester when I took it, it was a lot of US history. And I guess that is all for my two years at San Jose State. And so those were my classes and I'll talk about general experience of how it was like being an engineer. There were weeks where I spent no hours of studying, maybe towards the beginning of the semester. And that is probably because I procrastinate and that is why um, there are other weeks where I spent like 30 plus hours of studying towards like midterm season, final season. And I've had classes where I skipped lectures and I did just fine in the class because I felt better use of my time doing something else. I had other classes where I knew that I had to attend because the lectures were very useful and sometimes the professor tells you that they're just gonna do a random quiz and so you're kind of forced to go to every class to make sure you don't miss those extra points. And just because you're an engineer doesn't mean that I have no social life. I did have a social life. I actually joined two big organizations on campus called Akbine and VSA and I'll talk about it more in the future if you guys want to hear more about my experience with those two. You just have to make sure you were able to manage your time because VSA I had like a couple of meetings throughout the week and I had to make sure that I was able to do my assignments and study on time. Also I enrolled in a summer class which started last week. It is EE98 which is Introduction to Circuit Analysis. I'm taking it at a nearby community college because I heard it was really hard at San Jose State. My friend did take it here, so I'm gonna let y'all know what he said about it. So it is infamous for being a super hard class and people suggest to take it at a community college, which is what I did. However, he believed the opposite. The material was generally straightforward and the exams were based off of the homework. It can be quite overwhelming in the beginning. And he said that the homework was due on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Sundays. Generally three to four assignments due on each day. And assignments were easy once you understood what exactly to do and are very good study material for the exam. There was two midterms, a final, and one project. Then there's EE97, which is a lab for that class, and I'm going to take that in the fall. He said the lab reports were pretty easy and the lab reports were graded leniently. The lab had one midterm and one final. He said he got a 73 in the first midterm, bombed the final, but ended up with a C. So that's what it's like being a computer engineer at San Jose State. I could go more into depth, but this is the general outline of what it was like. All right, let's do an overview of the tip that I had for this video. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals who want to study and know what they're doing in the class. Ask for help from classmates, professors, people who've taken the class before, 
or doing the one-on-one -on -one, um, tutoring that they offer. If you fail one exam, just keep going because you never know, teachers can be lenient. If you missed all the other tips, I want you to know just two things that I think will be very useful if you're coming in as an engineer or any college student, really. One is not necessarily getting the easiest professor, but the best professor. And I know that's gonna be very hard, but you gotta ask the people who took the class before, see which professors are better, and go and rate my professor and, and see how people rate them. It's really important because not only they give you the grade whether you passed or not, but sometimes some professors can really kill your mood and your motivation for that particular subject. And you don't want that to happen. And second, just practice and study. There's no easy route, there's no secret tip. Just learn how to study for hours straight and just get in the zone. Because if you learn the skill to focus for if you learn the skill to focus and study for hours straight, it'll be much easier. You'll be much more efficient in studying your material. So that's it. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. If you have any other questions, please leave a comment below. Please watch my other videos, subscribe, do whatever. Thanks for watching and I'll whip you out of here. Another one, no, up. Uh, About 8,900. Oh, sir. It's 72. I think we can round up. <laughs> <laughs>